Okay, we are making ethers, and instead of using something like an SN2 reaction to make an ether, now we're going to use an SN1 reaction to make an ether. No, so if we're going to do an SN1, I am telling you that we are going to make a carbocation intermediate. And if we're going to make a carbocation, it better be a stable carbocation. So ideally, a tertiary carbocation. Maybe secondary. I kind of have a heavy bias against carbocations. So I'm only normally in favor of making tertiary carbocations. So let's see how this works. So we can use an SN1 reaction to make a uh, to make an ether. So let's say that we take something like T butanol. Now this is a tertiary alcohol. It's going to give rise to our tertiary carbocation. And if we treat this with something like sulfuric acid, a strong acid, and an alcohol like methanol. Now, if you mix methanol and sulfuric acid, you don't have sulfuric acid anymore. The reaction, the flask gets very hot, and what you actually have is protonated methanol. So we're actually going to start with protonated methanol because that's what forms when you mix sulfuric acid and, and methanol. So what's going to happen in this reaction is we are going to protonate. I'm not the most clear, but we're going to protonate our tertiary alcohol. And that's going to give us a nice leaving group on this highly substituted carbon. And so this leaving group is going to leave. And we get our tertiary carbocation. So what happens to carbocations? Carbocations suffer two fates. They either get attacked or they lose a beta hydrogen. In this case, we're in a reaction where we have methanol. And normally you wouldn't have gobs of sulfuric acid. You'd have just a little bit of sulfuric acid, a catalytic amount of sulfuric acid with a lot of methanol. So there's plenty of methanol floating around. The carbocation is a strong electrophile. And that's a perfect match for our weak nucleophile, methanol. Methanol can come in and attack. We form this species. And now we're one step away from forming our ether. Something simply needs to deprotonate that hydrogen. And the base that we have around in the greatest abundance is our solvent methanol. And so methanol will pluck that off. Then we formed a new ether. How did we form it? We made a carbocation and we did an SN1. We formed a carbocation and attacked it with a weak nucleophile. So that's an SN1 reaction. This is one common way to make many types of ethers. You don't have to have a tertiary carbocation, but tertiary or secondary, this won't work with, a, with a, a primary. So again, you have to be careful when you look at an ether, you know, something like this, we're, if you want to make this ether, you'd say, I'm going to make that bond because this carbon is going to make a stable carbocation, whereas making a carbocation at that carbon wouldn't work. So how would you do this? You would treat this with Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Oh boy, now I did it. Back, back. Um, you would want to form this carbocation with this being your nucleophile. So we'd want this alcohol and reacting with ethanol as our nucleophile. So this is a common way to make ethers. Um, I'd say it's not as common as a Williamson ether synthesis, which is an SN2 approach, but this is a completely valid way to put together ethers.